So first of all, a great thank you for the invitation from, uh, of course, Prime Minister Callas that I know very well from Brussels also. I think she has uh, really succeeded in making Tallinn the place where everybody comes back and discuss everything from regulation, security, market conditions, etc., and how we can basically share the best competences that we have. And, uh, and of course, also to the Minister Risalo, who uh, I met several times today and uh, had really good conversations on how we can basically collaborate even better in Europe and beyond. So um, Digital Europe, some of you might not know who we are. We represent around 45,000 companies, big companies, small companies. Of course, here I see Doris here from our Estonian association. We are present in more than, I think, 36 countries now and works very closely with several government, governments around the world, uh, the Japanese, of course, the US government, etc. cetera. So um, digital, well, I would say uh, it's... Uh, is at the heart of the security at the moment. And, and somehow we, are, we always knew, but we only realized how important it is uh, once we had the fatal attack of uh, the Russians towards Ukraine. And let me dwell on that just for a second. There is no way that um, Ukraine would have been able to move the data out, quickly out of, uh, of Ukraine and actually function as a society relatively well today if they had not had their, um, their, their data in cloud solutions and resilience strategy because they learned from the 2014 attacks. So how can we learn from that? How can we start having a discussion on not how can we regulate the private sector, but how can we collaborate with the private sector to increase the resilience of our societies? And how can we collaborate across border on that? Let's look at a few stats. Well, first of all, I mean, we have seen a detrimental increase in cyber attacks. We know that we are lacking over a million cybersecurity specialists in, in Europe, and it's not going to be better in the future if we don't do something drastical. And where do we actually have the competences? We have the competences mostly in private sector. So the, the, the countries that are actually has a good collaboration between private and public sector are more resilient. So if you look at what happened for Ukraine, 50% of their infrastructure was destroyed already in June. What do you do without an infrastructure? And of course, uh, I saw that Valeria was here uh, just before. We started collaborating right away. How can we help you to get a resilience of infrastructure? How can we get satellite connections? How can we bring you cables, radios, PCs? And that is what we have done ever since. And therefore, Digital Europe is strongly committed to making your, uh, Europe more resilient and to learn from the Ukrainian experience and to make sure that, of course, we keep their infrastructure going. Just these days, uh, around uh, 25,000 PCs are on their way and the first shipments have arrived in Ukraine. And we will continue and thank you to all the, the, the citizens that have basically donated PCs, all the companies that have donated devices for Ukraine, and we will continue our mission on this. So, just a few stats that shows us that we are not resilient and we are too busy talking about the dangers in civil society instead of understanding that we have strength in civil society to actually protect ourselves. Um, our president said it very clearly uh, in the struggle between democracy and autocracy, the digital sphere is not a side show, it's at the front line. And we have just published a paper called The Digital Frontline. So if you go to digitaleurope.org on our, our website, you're able to download it. Talking exactly about this. What are the areas of digital that we need to strengthen to become much more resilient as a society? Well, first of all, I mean, digital is absolutely at the heart of it. They, we are at the heart of, of course, the emergency mechanism in EU is now actually embracing digital devices, digital infrastructure component in war zones. We, have all, all, we always knew that it would be vaccines or, or medical care or human things for humans and, and for health reasons. But right now we actually have on the emergency mechanism, the EU, IT, ICT gear, it, and it, this derives directly from the negotiations that we have with the Commission. Contact them right away saying, if you do not have a digital safe infrastructure in a war zone, you are unable to fight back. 
And thank you to our membership companies that also donated satellite connections, radios, equipments to actually uh, re uh, maintain the infrastructure in Ukraine. Energy crisis, well, you know, we can start talking about how to do this and that and uh, renewable energies, and we need to do that. But the fact is that 40% of the CO2 emissions comes from buildings. Buildings, your building, this building, every building, because we are unable to control the energy within buildings. So through actually discussing how can we optimize the energy consumption with digital twins, with control of energy consumptions, as so we only use what we exactly need, how do we turn the building, how do we isolate the building, how do we look at you know, the energy consumption over time, we can actually, we don't need to only need to talk about how to do new sources. We can actually bring down the usage of energy so we are actually in a better place to support what we have right now, the energy crisis. We could have done that a long time ago. Again, proactive regulation and investment in how we can implement these solutions that are already present in society. Last but not least, of course, something like uh, the climate crisis. We have detection software on when the fire starts. We can address it through AI. These, this is where we can, and I would say one bullet mi is missing, of course, the health crisis, pandemics and other things. So how can we develop resilience on the big challenges through a private-public collaboration instead of talking about how we can prevent something imaginary from happening? We need to look at these very real threats of resilience to our society. So, uh, just looking at what we, uh, what we will do. So, the next commission, the next parliament, the next election for EU is just around the corner. And we have a few things that we want to uh, obtain. One is, of course, better procurement. One team. How can we invest together at scale? All these innovative companies that are here, in Denmark, in Estonia, in Germany, how can we boost them through common procurement programs across the, the governments in EU? Without that, they don't stand a chance of scalable, scalability within, within Europe. So that's one. And Digital Europe is committed to, to create 10 cyber campuses. Right now, we're defining with ENISA the cyber security certification schemes for skills. And hopefully, those cyber campuses, together with the government and the private sector, can deliver this great amount of cyber security specialists that we actually need to deliver. This is nothing that anybody, uh, any government can do by itself, because mostly we sit on the competences to actually deliver that training. And we need to, uh, anyway, address any kind of crisis together when it arises. Then, of course, 25% of digital spending targets on EU and NATO funds directly to tech innovators and scaling them. Let's make sure that we have in like-minded democracies and uh, I would say friends and security that we actually have an open market on scalable technologies. The Diana, and I saw that deep here from NATO was here earlier, the Diana program is a very good um, Example of that, but how do we also do that in the EU? Then, of course, let's remember that there is EU, but there's all these like-minded partners. We could take Taiwan. Well, they will certainly need help from the private sector if they are under attack one day, because they're not under a certain alliance. So we need to remember that there is a broader community of like-minded partners that we also need to embrace within these initiatives. So. In short, I have zero minutes back. Uh, let me just say, for Europe and beyond, so apologies for not having this on this slide, well, one market, one set of rules. And just remember, for the governments in this room, you sit on the public procurement, and I'm sorry, but Denmark is not a market, and neither is Sweden, and nor is Germany. In tech terms, every country in Europe is small. But together, we're a big market, and if we want to basically develop our ecosystem, we need your help also to launch these common tech uh, investments and to allow some of these SMEs to have you know, their share of actually these programs. Sandboxing. Do we need more regulation? 
We are the best regulated continent in the world. There is nothing that can possibly go wrong that we haven't already regulated, in my view. So I'm not saying we don't need regulation, but many times it's overlapping. Other times it's too many institutions. Every country has one. Just on GDPR, I think Germany has actually 16. So every time we reinvent the wheel, we need to think, could we do this smarter? Could we do like one system where companies can go in and actually comply with one across Europe? Do we need to do this by country? So how do we do better regulation? Last but not least, talent and finance. Well, and finance is market, talent is tech. So let's collaborate, the private and the public sector, to basically make Europe and our friends more resilient. Thank you.